we're not really supposed to drink milk as adults. It's the dead of winter, somewhere in Europe, 6,000 years ago. The sky is gray, the wind cuts like a knife, and what little grain remains is black with rot. The rivers are frozen, the fields are empty. Children cry for food that isn't there. Villages vanish one by one, their names erased by hunger and frost. Yet, somehow, scattered among the dying are pockets of survivors. Not warriors, not kings. Just ordinary families huddled in wooden huts with their cattle. While others fall, they endure. Their secret? Not wealth, not luck, but biology. Their bodies can do something almost no one else's can. They can drink milk and live on it. While famine devours Europe, these survivors have a food that flows fresh every day, even when the earth yields nothing. A living reservoir of fat, sugar, and protein. The one food that never truly runs out. And that simple act, drinking milk, would set off one of the most powerful genetic revolutions in human history. A tiny change in DNA that would reshape Europe forever. Today, most of the world loses the ability to digest milk after childhood. But in Northern Europe, nearly 95% of people can drink it for life. That ability comes from a single mutation in a gene called LCT. During human evolution, we got mutations in this LCT gene, the lactase gene. A single letter in our DNA switched from C to T, a molecular typo that turned out to be a life-saving code. It's called lactase persistence and it's one of the most dramatic cases of natural selection ever recorded. In less than 3,000 years, a blink in evolutionary time, it swept across a continent. From the Baltic to the British Isles, from the steppe to the fjords, this one trait rewired the European genome faster than almost any other known mutation. Why? Because it fed the survivors. Every famine, every drought, every plague, favored those who could squeeze life out of milk when crops failed and rivers dried. And every generation that followed carried that code further until it became Europe's quiet superpower. This is the story of how milk became evolution's weapon. How famine, genetics, and migration converged to rewrite human destiny. Before we dive deeper, make sure you're subscribed to Stone and Bone where we uncover the forgotten codes hidden in your DNA and the buried truths that built our world. Inside your body right now, there's a small miracle at work. When you sip a glass of milk, your small intestine releases an enzyme called lactase. Its job? To split the milk sugar, lactose, into two simpler sugars, glucose and galatose. Think of lactose as a locked door. Lactase is the key. Without it, the sugar sits in your gut unbroken, fermenting, feeding bacteria that produce gas, cramps, and diarrhea. For hundreds of thousands of years, humans only produced lactase as infants. Once we were weaned, nature flipped the switch off. Why waste energy making an enzyme we didn't need? But then, around 7,500 years ago, something extraordinary happened somewhere on the grassy plains of southeastern Europe. A single mutation appeared in a non-coding region, an enhancer, upstream of the LCT gene on chromosome 2. Scientists catalog it as minus 13,910T, a single letter change that jammed the off switch permanently. The result was revolutionary. People who could digest milk, not just as children, but for life. It didn't make them taller or stronger overnight. It made them survivors. Because when the harvest failed, milk didn't. Cows, goats, and sheep could keep producing calories through the worst winters. For every tribe or family that carried this mutation, survival odds doubled, sometimes tripled, over those who didn't. Over generations, nature's math took over. Children of milk drinkers lived longer, had more offspring, and those offspring carried the gene. This was a selective sweep a powerful surge through the population that geneticists today estimate had a selection coefficient of about 0.09, nearly 10 times stronger than the one that made humans resistant to malaria. In the microscopic space between two DNA letters, the fate of a continent was rewritten. 
because of one error that refused to turn off. Milk became Europe's most ancient superfood and evolution's most unexpected success story. Here's the twist. The first Europeans to herd cattle and make cheese couldn't actually drink milk. Archaeologists studying bones and pottery from the linear band keramic culture around 5,500 BCE found clear chemical fingerprints of dairy use. Vessels still hold traces of milk fats, and strainers from Poland bear microscopic residues of curds and whey. But when geneticists sequenced the DNA of those same farmers, the lactase persistence mutation was almost completely absent. They were surrounded by milk, but locked out of its power. So how did they survive? They turned to the world's first biotechnology, fermentation. By letting bacteria break lactose down, they transformed milk into cheese, yogurt, and butter. Foods their stomachs could handle. At sites like Katalhoyuk in Turkey and Kirskovo in Poland, pottery fragments reveal this ancient workaround. Each vessel is a relic of human ingenuity, a way to outsmart biology long before evolution caught up. Before Europeans evolved the gene for milk, they invented the culture of milk. But here's the real paradox. Even as dairying spread across the continent, the mutation stayed rare for nearly two millennia. Then, suddenly, something happened. Something that turned a harmless dietary quirk into a matter of life and death. Kind of mind-bending, isn't it? The first farmers could milk a cow, but couldn't drink the milk. What do you think you would have done back then? Risk a stomach ache? Or invent cheese like they did? Tell us in the comments. We love reading your takes. Around 8,200 years ago, Earth's climate convulsed. A massive outflow of glacial meltwater disrupted the Atlantic currents, plunging Europe into cold and drought. The event scientists now call the 8.2 kilo year climate collapse. Harvests failed. Populations shrank. For centuries, waves of famine and disease swept the continent. In those brutal cycles, milk wasn't just food. It was survival in liquid form. It flowed when crops failed. It nourished when nothing else did. And crucially, it was safe. Boiled or fermented milk carried fewer pathogens than river water crawling with dysentery and cholera. For families with the lactase persistence mutation, every famine tilted the odds. They lived long enough to have more children. Their descendants carried the mutation forward, generation after generation, until it raced through Europe's gene pool. According to Berger et al., Nature 2022, this wasn't a slow trickle. It was one of the fastest selective sweeps in human history, with a selection rate near 9% per generation. That's faster than the spread of genes that protect against malaria, tuberculosis, or even plague. Evolution didn't reward the well-fed. It rewarded the desperate. Each crisis was a test, and milk drinkers were the ones who endured. It wasn't daily milk drinkers who changed Europe. It was famine survivors. From that crucible of starvation, a single letter of DNA rose to dominance, turning hunger into heritage. Around 5,000 years ago, a new force began to move across the map of Europe. Not from the west, but from the endless grasslands of the Pontic Caspian Steppe. They were the Yamnaya, riders of the open horizon. Nomads who lived beside their herds, drank their milk, and buried their dead under great earthen mounds that still dot Ukraine and southern Russia today. For centuries, they had mastered survival on a landscape where farming failed, but grass never did. Their wagons carried hides, bone tools, and vessels stained with fermented mare's milk, what the steppe people called kumis. To the Yamnaya, dairy wasn't just food. It was identity, currency, and culture. When their descendants' remains were finally tested for ancient DNA, scientists found something stunning. The minus 13,910T mutation, the same lactase persistence allele at extraordinarily high frequency. These were Europe's first genetically confirmed lifelong milk drinkers. And when they migrated westward, they brought more than herds. 
They carried Indo-European languages, bronze weapons, and a genome that would rewrite Europe's future. Within a few centuries, the Yamnaya blended with the early farmers who had settled before them, people from the linear band Keramik and Cardial Ware cultures. That fusion didn't just change the continent's languages and faces, it changed its stomachs. Wherever the Yamnaya rode, the milk gene followed, and with it, an evolutionary advantage so great it reshaped the genetic landscape of an entire continent. By the time their descendants reached the British Isles, the gene's frequency had exploded. Nearly 60% of individuals already carried it. For the first time, large populations could truly live on milk and thrive in climates where grain withered. The Yamnaya didn't just conquer Europe, they colonized its biology. If stories like this stir something ancient in you, hit that like button and join us here at Stone and Bone. Every click helps us keep unearthing the forgotten science and buried truths that built our world. With milk came permanence. Cattle and goats were no longer backup food. They became the foundation of settlement itself. From about 3000 BCE, archeological layers show a quiet but radical shift. Villages expanding, population densities rising, and new forms of pottery emerging that spoke one word, dairy. Across Central and Northern Europe, archaeologists uncover churns, strainers, and fat-stained jars designed specifically for cheesemaking and butter storage. Microscopic chemical analysis, gas chromatography, and mass spectrometry detects milk fat isotopes still clinging to the clay. It's proof that by this time, dairy wasn't occasional. It was daily life. And this abundance changed everything. Milk provided about 150 kilocalories per cup, loaded with calcium, protein, and essential amino acids. In colder northern climates, where crops could fail nine months a year, herds became living larders. Communities could survive on far less land, support more children, and recover faster after winters. Anthropologists call it the dairy revolution, a feedback loop of biology and culture. The gene allowed more dairy use. More dairy use favored those with the gene. Generation after generation, the loop accelerated. Milk turned scarcity into stability. It allowed humans to stay put, to build walls, trade routes, and memories. It fed the villages that became kingdoms and the kingdoms that became Europe. By the late Bronze Age, entire cuisines had formed around this new resource. In the north, rich cultured butter and cream. In the west, dense hard cheeses built to last the winter. Each was both a food and a technology. Concentrated calories that could travel, trade, and sustain armies. From a single genetic error came the first renewable food economy, and from that it came civilization itself. Born not from conquest, but from milk. Even after this great genetic conquest, the milk gene never became universal. Europe's landscape today still carries the fingerprints of that uneven past. In the north, from Norway to Ireland, up to 95% of people can drink milk with no discomfort at all. In Britain, it's nearly everyone, but travel south and the map begins to fracture. In Italy, Spain, and Greece, Lactose intolerance can reach 40 to 60% of the population. In Sardinia, the number drops even lower. There, many still share the same genetic profile as their Neolithic ancestors, farmers who never met the milk-born Yamnaya. Why this divide? Because the mutation's strength depended on climate, geography, and isolation. Northern Europe is a place of long, dark winters and short growing seasons. For half the year, crops could vanish beneath snow. Dairy animals, however, kept giving, turning grass into liquid calories even when the soil froze. In the south, by contrast, food was more forgiving. Mediterranean fields and fruit trees could yield year-round, and access to grains, olives, and fish meant there was less evolutionary pressure to adapt. So natural selection drew an invisible line across the continent, a genetic north-south frontier that still exists today. And yet, it's not just environment that shaped the map, it's migration. Sardinia, 
isolated by sea, remained untouched by most steppe migration. The Balkan highlands, too, acted as refuges for older populations, where the mutation spread slowly, if at all. Each region became a genetic time capsule, preserving earlier versions of the European genome. Europe's milk map is more than biology. It's a living fossil of its migration, a record of where the Yamnaya reached and where they never set foot. Even now, the ability to drink milk without pain tells a story written thousands of years ago, a genetic memory of hunger, climate, and survival. Across the deserts of Arabia and the savannas of East Africa, evolution was performing an encore. Thousands of kilometers from Europe, the same biological story unfolded, but with a new script. Among the Maasai and Tutsi, pastoralist tribes whose lives revolved around their herds, milk wasn't just food. It was identity, religion, and currency. And when scientists sequenced their DNA, they discovered something remarkable. These lifelong milk drinkers didn't share Europe's minus 13,910 T mutation at all. They had evolved their own minus 14,000 10 C, a completely different genetic path to the same destiny. This was convergent evolution, nature's greatest trick. When faced with the same survival pressure, separate populations found the same solution. It didn't stop there. Across the Arabian Peninsula, Camel herding Bedouins developed yet another mutation, granting the same power to drink milk under a burning sun. Each adaptation arose independently, yet all followed the same law. When hunger or thirst strike hard enough, evolution listens. From frozen Europe to the equator's heat, the same enzyme became humanity's most adaptable invention. Different genes, different continents, one shared truth. Survival tastes the same everywhere. 65% of people alive today still lose the ability to digest milk after childhood. But for the other 35%, mostly descendants of those milk-born survivors, the power remains. The same mutation that once decided who lived or died in a winter famine now decides what fills supermarket shelves. Cheese, yogurt, and butter aren't just foods. They're echoes of an ancient evolutionary victory. Every carton of milk, every cafe latte, every block of cheddar is a quiet monument to that tiny typo in our DNA. And yet, evolution never stands still. Modern life has flipped the script again. While ancient people fought to keep milk, millions today are choosing to remove it. Plant-based milks, lactose-free products, genetic engineering, humanity is rewriting its diet once more. But deep in our cells, the old story remains, unchanged and undefeated. The mutation that saved Europe didn't just feed bodies, it built civilizations. It turned starvation into strategy and desperation into destiny. It is the reason millions of us can raise a glass of milk today to ancestors who refused to vanish in the snow. In the end, the story of milk isn't about cows or crops, it's about survival, written into the smallest lines of human code. One mutation, one winter, one continent transformed. And every sip you take is proof that evolution remembers. If this story made you see your own DNA in a new light, hit the like button. It helps more curious minds find these hidden histories. Tell us in the comments. Do you think humanity's next great mutation will come from technology? or from hunger once again. You're watching Stone and Bone, where history is written not in books, but in blood, bone, and the silent language of our genes.